Hello and welcome back. And that is right, today we want to return to the subject of 30 terabyte hard drives and discuss something a tad contentious. This video was going under different tiles. Indeed, this went from 30 terabytes is too big to this hard drive scares me to perhaps seriously Seagate chill the hell out and just what are you made of money or something. Bottom line, these are a good thing. 30 terabyte hard drives are a great thing in an age of AI and the huge amount of data that's being created. Um, the idea that we can get as much storage with as little footprint as possible is good. The lowering of the price per terabyte eventually after the launch and ultimately having a single point of failure compared with multiple points of failure, there's arguments back and forth. I know arguing the toss about these for a lot of users is pointless, but it's not all pros. So. My review of this was broadly positive, but this video is more about devil's advocate. This is going to be me talking about why 30 TB drives might be a bad thing. And again, real quick, before you hammer in the comments how absolutely spurious and awful some of the following arguments are going to be, keep in mind that, as I said, these are, for me, a broadly a good thing. But I think we have to at least be balanced sometimes and think about what drives like these, as positive as they are, for the most part, aren't going to be perfect for everyone. And that's what this is about. So again, before you flame me in the comments, understand it's devil's advocate. This thing is so many eggs in one basket, it's unreal. This is a 30 terabyte hard drive. Now, this is, and this one indeed, the Exos drive there, are built for NAS, they're built for multi-drive deployment. But there are definitely going to be users looking at this or looking at the SMR alternatives for single drive deployment that are thinking, do you know what, 30 terabytes sounds grand. It's still a huge amount of data going into one drive. I've mentioned it before, but buying one of these means you've got to buy two of these because the minute you've created a deposit, a repository for 30 terabytes of storage, you need to have a backup of this. So you're going to immediately have to theoretically have 60 terabytes the minute you have 30 terabytes. And as it's a backup, you're not even going to be able to use it all. Now, that goes one step further for reviewers like me. I'll let you behind the curtain a little bit here. When this was sent to me by Seagate, again, they didn't sponsor the video. They didn't control any of the output. They're not controlling this one. Again, they can't change anything I say. But when they send drives like this, normally I either have to send them back afterwards or the drive gets shipped here and I've got it for like 12 months, two years, and then sometimes they forget about it and it ends up in the background of one of my videos. But with that, I have to sign an agreement that I'm not gonna sell this on. In some cases, you can't even give them away to charity, something we're kind of dealing with here in the background of NAS Compares, where we're thinking about getting rid of some of the old tech we have around the office. We'll get onto that in another video. But it means the best I can do is give this away. And on the face of it, you might be thinking, Cool, give it away to me. 30 terabytes, great, great. But as I mentioned, the minute you've got this, you're gonna now need to have another drive. Now, if I give this away to a family member, great, I'll give it to a family member. Well done, brother, whoever. Get yourself a new drive here, and then you've got 30 terabytes of space. The minute that drive fails, I'm responsible for that family member losing a potential 30 TB maximum because while I gave them the drive, I didn't give them a backup in place and I'm at fault. I know these are spurious pie in the sky arguments, but all it does is service to underline to me that 30 terabytes sounds great, but it's not for everyone. And there are users who may well invest in a solution like this during Prime Day or Black Friday deals that actually might be setting themselves up for a fall if they don't provision accordingly for 30 terabytes of data storage. Again, devil's advocate. But do you remember when 1TB drives, 1.5TB drives, 2, 3, and 4TB drives started arriving on the scene? It started happening around about 2008, making its way through to about 2012 to 2013. And do you know what happened towards the end of that time? They started getting rid of 
120, 320, and in some cases even 500 gigabyte drives. They carried on, but the range of those drives and the utility of those drives for different services started to diminish. Because obviously, if you are a, a hard drive manufacturer, you need to work out where the resources are going. One of the things that concerns me about 30TB drives is as more and more development from Seagate goes towards cracking their target of 100TB drives by the end of the decade, they might start thinning out or eradicating some of the smaller capacities, which might not suit you. You came to a video about 30TB drives after all, but there's going to be users out there that like having smaller capacity drives, either in larger rate environments, or they simply do not need these bigger drives which, you know, aren't perfect. Power consumption, noise, and heat. Large capacity drives generate more heat. They generate more noise. They consume more power. It isn't like for like. This isn't 10 times more, for example, than a th um, 3TB drive. But the bigger drives have much more industrial construction. In their workings, you generally find no drive under about 12 to 16 TB is ever 5400 RPM anymore. They're all dedicated 7200. They've all got at least 256 uh, megabytes of cache. I think there's a few exceptions at 128. And ultimately, all of those drives are bigger and hungrier. And some people just don't want to run those setups. And bigger drives like this, as again, we did our testing, one of the things that we found was the boot power required for these drives was notably higher than small capacity drives like these ones. And again, running more modest spec systems can mean that some SATA backplanes, the minute you start having multiple of these drives, don't have the PD, the power delivery, to each of those SATA ports to get the job done. Again, not everyone, but we've seen numerous examples in the past, and you know some a little bit more uh, recent than others, where NAS systems are not able to run bigger, bolder, more power-consuming drives at their initial boot, and once that power is separated across the SATA ports, they actually open the door to systems having fails in their RAID, because one of the drives drops out due to intermittent power delivery. Again, very small numbers, but something to consider in this world of bigger, bolder drives. Anyone that's followed this channel for a while will probably understand the next point coming and have seen it coming a mile off, because I bang this drum a lot. Genuinely, as good as a 30 TB drive is, there are multiple reasons why having four 10 TB drives in a RAID 5, if you can accommodate it, works out more cost effective and certainly gives you higher performance. Having one drive read and written to simultaneously, especially in conjunction uh, compared with SSD, something we'll talk about later on, can often pale in comparison to those four 10 TBs where you've got one driver fail over there, and yes, we're introducing multiple points of failure, of course, but in terms of overall uh, uh, return on investment, total cost of ownership, there is an argument to be made when it comes to having multiple smaller capacity drives versus large capacity drives. And as appealing as the, these are, and I don't think this is a good enough argument that these shouldn't be developed, but I would say there are going to be users that will immediately go for the bigger drives and not factor in that the smaller drives might be an option while these are so loud. You thought we'd get the whole way through this video without talking about SSDs? Fat chance. Let's be honest, as good as 30 terabytes is, performance-wise, these drives are still going to sit on average, probably around 200 to at best 230 megabytes per second on average over a sustained period there. Yes, they're going to work out cheaper and get you probably get cheaper over time as well. But nonetheless, we got to talk about the potential for SSDs. I'm not saying hard drives are dead. That's a spurious argument and I won't hear it. But given that you can now get M.2 NVMEs at four terabytes for around the $200 mark, which is only around twice that of a 4 TB hard drive, there is an argument to be made. If you look at some of these more modest flash systems, these are, even the ones that are running on like N uh, Twin Lake Intel CPUs, like the N150 or N355, some of these are dirt cheap. 
the result is that you can get M2 SSDs, again, using the uh, multiple drive configuration we mentioned earlier on, and get drives that are significantly higher in performance there. The result is that, yes, hard drives work out cheaper, and particularly when you get to these larger capacities, which, by the way, you're never going to get on SSDs without going for serious OEM or fucking data center drives that are going to absolutely nail your wallet to the wall. But if you think about the phrase, time equals money, these things are going to save you a fortune. Here's an example. This is the B-Link ME Mini. We've talked about this now as a bunch here on the channel. It's got six M.2 slots. Now, if we take this device and we buy six M.2 NVMEs at four terabyte each, we've just spent $1,200 on SSDs there. We get this device that you can pick up for about 200 or so dollars. So we're now up to $1,400. Sounds like a lot, right? Well, this has now got 20 terabytes of storage with that RAID 5 failover, one of those disks there in the background. Yes, there's an argument to be made about durability. Yes, we could talk a lot more about the durability of drives like this and their 550 workload. Of course, that's one of the things that we've not really touched on because we're focusing on capacity. But nonetheless, at that point, we spent $1,400 and I've got 20 terabytes of high performance storage. Now, of course, we only get to enjoy it on the inside because of 2.5 gig, but these are only giving us 250 a piece anyway. These in the RAID environment, we getting closer to a gigabit, I'm oh, sorry, a gigabyte of performance internally for our VMs and more. Now, if we were to go ahead and try to get two 20 terabyte drives, now we could pick up 20 terabytes for around 300 nicker mark, some of them down at 260 during Prime Day deals and more. So we get two of those, we're probably going to spend between five to six hundred dollars on a couple of 20 TB hard drives. With that, we'd have to get a two bay NAS solution. If we go for something Intel powered, we're now looking at around the $300 mark. So now at this point, we've spent about seven to $800 on a two bay hard drive solution with two 20 terabyte hard drives. Now, that's, you've still made a big saving there, let's be honest. But still, that two bay is not gonna perform anywhere near as well or at the latency benefits as that of the one that we talked about here. Yes, we're spending more on day one, but ultimately the return on investment, a total cost of ownership is higher, fine. But the uh, return on investment and the performance benefits and therefore time saved has to be accounted for. Bottom line, these are still great drives. I don't want to piss on anyone's party. These are great, and there's definitely good for the industry knowing that bigger drives are out there, but not at the detriment of smaller drives, both in terms of development and in availability in most areas there. And as long as that balance is still maintained, I am overall really happy with these. Notwithstanding the capacity benefits as touched on, durability is something to be talked about in a world where we can have SSDs in SATA and M.2 NVMe, allowing us to have more comprehensive tiered storage and archival storage. Having all of these running the same race, it can only be good for us. But just remember that 30 terabyte drives are not going to be for everyone. And don't think these are the instant solution for everyone to keep in mind. Thank you so much for watching. Below you'll find a link to our full review, both written and our YouTube review. And links hopefully down there in order to get hold of many of the products that I talked about in today's video for yourself. So if you found this video helpful and if you're going to go to those two shops anyway, make sure all those two things are true. Use those links to get hold of your products because doing that results in a small commission coming here. Then as compares, it's just me and Eddie and it allows us to keep doing what we do. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.